On Tuesday, February 4th, Skyline College hosted a best-selling author, award-winning filmmaker, hip-hop artist, and professor, M.K. Asante. From growing up in the tough urban streets of Philadelphia to studying at the University of London, earning a B.A. from Lafayette College and a Master of Fine Arts from UCLA School of Film and Television, M.K. Asante went from rock bottom to making his way to the top, and he's still a rising star. Part of the MK World Tour, he stopped by here at Skyline Community College to speak about his newest book called Buck, a memoir of his life from the age of 12 and how he became the man he is today. The pages are covered with real stories and real life experiences mixed with hip hop phrases that give the book a philosophical rhythm. The conviction in his stature and victory in his words makes everything seem possible. The understandings of his life pushed him to unknown territories, places he never intended to go, but now realize it's where he needed to be. Against all odds, M.K. Asante made something out of nothing and found a purpose in his life, a passion, writing, and inspiring. He found freedom in a confined society and encourages everyone to do the same. College, let's please welcome Professor M.K. Asante. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, Skyline? How y'all doing? All right, uh, before I start, I just want to give a, a big shout out to all of you for coming and, and being mad thick and deep in here. Um, I kind of want to just start by talking about, you know, my journey, a little bit about who I am, about what I represent. Let's start with the um, title. Young Buck, Buck Wild, Buck Shots, Buck Town, Slave Buck, Black Buck, Make Buck, Buck Now. I know you heard that in the trailer. I wanted a title that was going to be short but also be long in terms of its meaning. Like it has so many, it conjures up so many different ideas, right, when you think of Buck. I'm from Philly, so in Philly we call each other, you know, I mean, Young Buck. That's, you know, I'm sure they say that here too in other places, you're a Young Buck. So that's the first level of Buck. Then you have the notion of Buck Wild. Well, this book takes place from the ages of 13 to 18, and I was Buck Wild. <laughs> so that's, that's what that relates to. Um, buck shots. That's actually a reference to, you know, I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but we call it Philadelphia, Pistolvania. You know, so buck shots is a reference to the, the, the violence in our community that's, that's, that's basically ravaging the community. Um, then the whole notion of buck town, that's an a old school. We got the notion of make buck, right? This book, this memoir is about my education, right? My miseducation, my re-education, my self-education, my street education, right? My, my learning about the difference between the school, the difference between school and education, because there is a difference, you know? So, you know, so the, the whole next thing is make buck, right? My, my, my education in terms of how to make a buck and, and class uh, and classism and all these things, right? Then we have the notion of black buck. Black buck, you know, back in the day during slavery, a buck used to be a derogatory term used to call black men. So they'd be like, oh, we're selling this black buck right here, right? So now I'm bringing in issues of race, we got class, issues of class, and then the whole, you know, the, it ends with the whole notion of buck now. And I'll get back to what buck now means in a little bit, but first I wanna um, kind of introduce you to the book, to the style. This book is written in the first person present tense, so that means that it's not me looking back, you know, now at my life back then. It's you're in it with me, right? First person, present tense. So when I'm 14, you're 14 with me seeing it as I, as I saw it, right? So I want to kind of open up and talk a little bit about Buck. Chapter 1. The fall in Philadelphia. Outside is the color of cornbread and blood. Change hangs in the air like the sneaks on the live wires behind my crib. Me and my big brother Uzi in the kitchen. He's rolling a blunt on top of the source. The one with Tyson on the cover, rocking a koofy, ice grilling through the gloss. Uzi can roll a blunt with his eyes closed. He cracks, splits, and busts. Yo, Malo, that's me, by the way, Malo. Yo, Malo, the rawest crews of these places, so I write about them. Um, you know, I say we pour in the fells like syrup, steady and slow. Yo, this school looks just like jail. I wonder why mad schools look like jails, or do jails look like schools? The jail Uzi's in is actually nicer than this. If schools look like prisons and prisons look like schools, we gonna act like prisoners or students? He took me to an East Stroudsburg University a few years back. Him versus Cornell West versus Arthur Schlesinger. 
Yo, it was packed, standing room only. I remember how West, this cool black dude with a big afro and a tight three-piece suit, talked with his hands flying real fast like he was conducting an orchestra. And how Schlesinger, this old white guy with hair the color of milk and a red bow tie, sounded like he was, he was a statue. I remember the cheers, the boos, the ad-libs. Most of all, though, I remember how dope my pops was. His passion, energy, confidence, intelligence. Yo, half the time, I didn't even know what they was talking about. Hegemony, pedagogy, subverting the dominant paradigm. But I was proud. Back then, I didn't really get it. But now, I think I do. Afrocentricity basically means that black people should view the world through their own black eyes. It's like the poster my dad has framed in the hallway that says, that people without knowledge of their past is like a tree with no roots. Hit the earth like a comet, invasion. Nas is like the Afrocentric Asian, half man. Okay, skyline, the lyrics. 